Ramayana, Sanskrit, Ramayanam Ramayanam is one of the two major Sanskrit epics of ancient India, the other being the Mahabharata. Along with the Mahabharata, it forms the Hindu Itihasa. The epic, traditionally ascribed to the Hindu Valmiki, narrates the life of Rama, the legendary prince of the Kosala kingdom. It follows his 14-year exile to the forest from the kingdom, by his father King Dasharatha, on request of his second wife Kaiki. His travels across forests in India with his wife Sita and brother Lakshmana, the kidnapping of his wife by Ravana, the great king of Lanka, resulting in a war with him, and Rama's eventual return to Ayodhya to be crowned king. There have been many attempts to unravel the epic's historical growth and compositional layers. Various recent scholars' estimates for the earliest stage of the text range from the 27th to 24th centuries BCE, with later stages extending up to the 23rd century CE. The Ramayana is one of the largest ancient epics in world literature. It consists of nearly 24,000 verses mostly set in the shloka meter, divided into seven khandas and about 500 sargas chapters. In Hindu tradition, it is considered to be the Adi Kavya first poem. It depicts the duties of relationships, portraying ideal characters like the ideal father, the ideal servant, the ideal brother, the ideal husband and the ideal king. Ramayana was an important influence on later Sanskrit poetry and Hindu life and culture. Like Mahabharata, Ramayana is not just a story, it presents the teachings of ancient Hindu sages in narrative allegory, interspersing philosophical and ethical elements. The characters Rama, Sita, Lakshmana, Bharata, Hanuman, Shatruna, and Ravana are all fundamental to the cultural consciousness of India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Southeast Asian countries such as Thailand, Cambodia, Malaysia, and Indonesia. There are many versions of Ramayana in Indian languages, besides Buddhist, Sikh, and Jain adaptations. There are also Cambodian, Indonesian, Filipino, Thai, Lao, Burmese, and Malaysian versions of the tale. Etymology The name Ramayana is a Titpurusa compound of the name Rama. Textual history and structure According to Hindu tradition, and the Ramayana itself, the epic belongs to the genre of Itihasa like Mahabharata. The definition of Itihasa is a narrative of past events which includes teachings on the goals of human life. According to Hindu tradition, Ramayana takes place during a period of time known as Treta Yuga. In its extant form, Valmiki's Ramayana is an epic poem of some 24,000 verses. The text survives in several thousand partial and complete manuscripts, the oldest of which is a palm leaf manuscript found in Nepal and dated to the 11th century CE. A Times of India report dated 18 December 2015 informs about the discovery of a 6th-century manuscript of the Ramayana at the Asiatic Society Library, Kolkata. The Ramayana text has several regional renderings, recensions and sub-recensions. Textual scholar Robert P. Goldman differentiates two major regional revisions, the Northern N and the Southern S. Scholar Ramesh Chunder Dutt writes that, "...the Ramayana, like the Mahabharata, is a growth of centuries, but the main story is more distinctly the creation of one mind." There has been discussion as to whether the first and the last volumes Bala Kanda and Uttara Kanda of Valmiki's Ramayana were composed by the original author. 
Most Hindus still believe they are integral parts of the book, in spite of some style differences and narrative contradictions between these two volumes and the rest of the book. Retellings include Kamban's Ramavataram in Tamil, c. 11th 12th century, Gona Buddha Reddy's Ramayanam in Telugu, c. 13th century, Madhava Kandali's Satakanda Ramayana in Assamese, c. 14th century, Kritiba's Ojhs Kritavasi. Ramayan also known as Sri Rama Panchali in Bengali c 15th century Sarala Das Vilanka Ramayana c 15th century and Balaram Das Dandi Ramayana also known as the Jagamohan Ramayana c 16th century both in Odia San Eknath's Bhavarth Ramayan c 16th century in Marathi Tulsidas Ramcharitamanas c 16th century in Awadhi which is an Eastern form of Hindi, and Thungathu Ezuthachan's Adhyathmaramayanam in Malayalam. Period Ramayana predates Mahabharata. However, the general cultural background of Ramayana is one of the post-urbanization periods of the eastern part of North India and Nepal, while Mahabharata reflects the Kuru areas west of this, from the Rigvedic to the late Vedic period. By tradition, the text belongs to the Treta Yuga, second of the four eons yuga of Hindu chronology. Rama is said to have been born in the Treta Yuga to King Dasharatha in the Ikshvaku dynasty. The names of the characters Rama, Sita, Dasharatha, Janaka, Vashista, Vishwamitra are all known in late Vedic literature. However, nowhere in the surviving Vedic poetry is there a story similar to the Ramayana of Valmiki. According to the modern academic view, Vishnu, who, according to Bala Kanda, was incarnated as Rama, first came into prominence with the epics themselves and further, during the Puranic period of the later first millennium CE. Also, in the epic Mahabharata, there is a version of Ramayana known as Ramafakyana. This version is depicted as a narration to Yudhishthira. Books 2 to 6 form the oldest portion of the epic, while the first and last books, Bala Kanda and Uttara Kanda, respectively, are later editions. As some style differences and narrative contradictions between these two volumes and the rest of the book, the author or authors of Bala Kanda and Ayodhya Kanda appear to be familiar with the eastern Gangetic Basin region of northern India and with the Kosala, Mathila and Magadha regions during the period of the 16 Mahajanapadas, based on the fact that the geographical and geopolitical data accords with what is known about the region. Characters. Topic: Ikshvaku dynasty. Dasharatha is king of Ayodhya and father of Rama. He has three queens: Kasalaya, Kaiki, and Samitra, and four sons: Bharata, and twins Lakshmana, Shatruna, and Rama. Once, Kaiki saved Dasharatha in a war, and as a reward, she got the privilege from Dasharatha to fulfill two of her wishes at any time of her lifetime. She made use of the opportunity and forced Dasharatha to make their son Bharata crown prince and send Rama into exile for fourteen years. Dasharatha dies heartbroken after Rama goes into exile. Rama is the main character of the tale. Portrayed as the seventh avatar of god Vishnu, he is the eldest and favorite son of Dasharatha, the king of Ayodhya and his chief queen, Kasalaya. He is portrayed as the epitome of virtue. Dasharatha is forced by Kaiki to command Rama to relinquish his right to the throne for fourteen years and go into exile. Rama kills the evil demon Ravana, who abducted his wife Sita, and later returns to Ayodhya to form an ideal state. Sita is another of the tale's protagonists. 
she is a daughter of Mother Earth, adopted by King Janaka, and Rama's beloved wife. Rama went to Mathila and got a chance to marry her by breaking the Shiv Dhanush bow while trying to tie a knot to it in a competition organized by King Janaka of Mathila. The competition was to find the most suitable husband for Sita and many princes from different states competed to win her. Sita is the avatara of goddess Lakshmi, the consort of Vishnu. Sita is portrayed as the epitome of female purity and virtue. She follows her husband into exile and is abducted by the demon king Ravana. She is imprisoned on the island of Lanka, until Rama rescues her by defeating Ravana. Later, she gives birth to twin boys Love and Kusha. Bharata is the son of Dasharatha and Queen Kaiki. When he learns that his mother Kaiki has forced Rama into exile and caused Dasharatha to die brokenhearted, he storms out of the palace and goes in search of Rama in the forest. When Rama refuses to return from his exile to assume the throne, Bharata obtains Rama's sandals and places them on the throne as a gesture that Rama is the true king. Bharata then rules Ayodhya as the regent of Rama for the next fourteen years, staying outside the city of Ayodhya. He was married to Mandavi. Lakshmana is a younger brother of Rama, who chose to go into exile with him. He is the son of King Dasharatha and Queen Samitra and twin of Shatruna. Lakshmana is portrayed as an avatar of Shesha, the Naga associated with the god Vishnu. He spends his time protecting Sita and Rama, during which time he fights the demoness Sherpanaka. He is forced to leave Sita, who was deceived by the demon Maricha into believing that Rama was in trouble. Sita is abducted by Ravana upon his leaving her. He was married to Sita's younger sister Urmila. Shatruna is a son of Dasharatha and his third wife Queen Samitra. He is the youngest brother of Rama and also the twin brother of Lakshmana. He was married to Shrutakirti. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Allies of Rama. Vanarahanuman is a Vanara belonging to the kingdom of Kishkinda. He is an ideal bhakta of Rama. He is born as son of Kesari, a Vanara king in Sumeru region and his wife Anyana. He plays an important part in locating Sita and in the ensuing battle. He is believed to live until our modern world. Sugrava, a Vanara king who helped Rama regain Sita from Ravana. He had an agreement with Rama through which Vali, Sugriva's brother and king of Kishkinda, would be killed by Rama in exchange for Sugriva's help in finding Sita. Sugriva ultimately ascends the throne of Kishkinda after the slaying of Vali and fulfills his promise by putting the Vinara forces at Rama's disposal. Angada is a Vinara who helped Rama find his wife Sita and fight her abductor, Ravana, in Ramayana. He was son of Vali and Tara and nephew of Sugriva. Angada and Tara are instrumental in reconciling Rama and his brother, Lakshmana, with Sugriva after Sugriva fails to fulfill his promise to help Rama find and rescue his wife. Together they are able to convince Sugriva to honor his pledge to Rama instead of spending his time carousing and drinking. Rikshajumbavan, Jamvanta is known as Riksharaj, king of the Rikshas. Rikshas are bears. In the epic Ramayana, Jambavantha helped Rama find his wife Sita and fight her abductor, Ravana. It is he who makes Hanuman realize his immense capabilities and encourages him to fly across the ocean to search for Sita in Lanka, Gritajatayu, son of Aruna and nephew of Garuda. A demi-god who has the form of a vulture that tries to rescue Sita from Ravana. Jatayu fought valiantly with Ravana, but as Jatayu was very old, Ravana soon got the better of him. As Rama and Lakshmana chanced upon the stricken and dying Jatayu in their search for Sita, he informs them of the direction in which Ravana had gone. 
Sampati, son of Aruna, brother of Jatayu. Sampati's role proved to be instrumental in the search for Sita, Rikshasavabhashana, youngest brother of Ravana. He was against the abduction of Sita and joined the forces of Rama when Ravana refused to return her. His intricate knowledge of Lanka was vital in the war and he was crowned king after the fall of Ravana. Foes of Rama Rikshasasravana, a Rikshasa, is the king of Lanka. He was son of a sage named Vishrava and Daitya princess Kaikeshi. After performing severe penance for 10,000 years he received a boon from the creator god Brahma, he could henceforth not be killed by gods, demons, or spirits. He is portrayed as a powerful demon king who disturbs the penances of rishis. Vishnu incarnates as the human Rama to defeat him, thus circumventing the boon given by Brahma. Indrajit or Mignada, the eldest son of Ravana who twice defeated Rama and Lakshmana in battle, before succumbing to Lakshmana. An adept of the magical arts, he coupled his supreme fighting skills with various stratagems to inflict heavy losses on Vinara army before his death. Kumbhakarna, brother of Ravana, famous for his eating and sleeping. He would sleep for months at a time and would be extremely ravenous upon waking up, consuming anything set before him. His monstrous size and loyalty made him an important part of Ravana's army. During the war he decimated the Vinara army before Rama cut off his limbs and head. Shirpanaka, Ravana's demoness sister who fell in love with Rama and had the magical power to take any form she wanted, Vanaravali, was king of Kishkinda, husband of Tara, a son of Indra, elder brother of Sugrava and father of Angada. Vali was famous for the boon that he had received, according to which anyone who fought him in single combat lost half his strength to Vali, thereby making Vali invulnerable to any enemy. He was killed by Lord Rama, an avatar of Vishnu. Synopsis Bala Kanda Dasharatha was the king of Ayodhya. He had three wives, Kaushalaya, Kaiki and Sumitra. He was childless for a long time and anxious to produce an heir, so he performs a fire sacrifice known as Putra Kameshti Yagya. As a consequence, Rama is first born to Kaushalaya, Bharata is born to Kaiki, Lakshmana and Shatruna are born to Sumitra. These sons are endowed, to various degrees, with the essence of the supreme trinity entity Vishnu. Vishnu had opted to be born into mortality to combat the demon Ravana, who was oppressing the gods, and who could only be destroyed by a mortal. The boys are reared as the princes of the realm, receiving instructions from the scriptures and in warfare from Vashistha. When Rama is 16 years old, sage Vishwamitra comes to the court of Dasharatha in search of help against demons who were disturbing sacrificial rites. He chooses Rama, who is followed by Lakshmana, his constant companion throughout the story. Rama and Lakshmana receive instructions and supernatural weapons from Vishwamitra and proceed to destroy the demons. Janaka was the king of Mathila. One day, a female child was found in the field by the king in the deep furrow dug by his plough. Overwhelmed with joy, the king regarded the child as a miraculous gift of God. The child was named Sita, the Sanskrit word for furrow. Sita grew up to be a girl of unparalleled beauty and charm. The king had decided that whoever could lift and wield the heavy bow, presented to his ancestors by Shiva, could marry Sita. Sage Vishwamitra takes Rama and Lakshmana to Mathila to show the bow. Then Rama desires to lift it and goes on to wield the bow and when he draws the string, it breaks. 
Marriages are arranged between the sons of Dasharatha and daughters of Janaka. Rama gets married to Sita, Lakshmana to Urmila, Bharata to Mandavi and Shatruna to Shrutakirti. The weddings are celebrated with great festivity in Mathila and the marriage party returns to Ayodhya. Ayodhya Kanda After Rama and Sita have been married for twelve years, an elderly Dasharatha expresses his desire to crown Rama, to which the Kosala assembly and his subjects express their support. On the eve of the great event, Kaiki, her jealousy aroused by Manthara, a wicked maidservant, claims two boons that Dasharatha had long ago granted her. Kaiki demands Rama to be exiled into the wilderness for fourteen years, while the succession passes to her son Bharata. The heartbroken king, constrained by his rigid devotion to his given word, accedes to Kaikiai's demands. Rama accepts his father's reluctant decree with absolute submission and calm self-control which characterizes him throughout the story. He is joined by Sita and Lakshmana. When he asks Sita not to follow him, she says, "...the forest where you dwell is Ayodhya for me and Ayodhya without you is a veritable hell for me." After Rama's departure, King Dasharatha, unable to bear the grief, passes away. Meanwhile, Bharata who was on a visit to his maternal uncle, learns about the events in Ayodhya. Bharata refuses to profit from his mother's wicked scheming and visits Rama in the forest. He requests Rama to return and rule. But Rama, determined to carry out his father's orders to the letter, refuses to return before the period of exile. However, Bharata carries Rama's sandals and keeps them on the throne, while he rules as Rama's regent. Aranya Kanda After thirteen years of exile, Rama, Sita and Lakshmana journey southward along the banks of River Godavari, where they build cottages and live off the land. At the Panchavati forest they are visited by a rikshasi named Sherpanaka, sister of Ravana. She tries to seduce the brothers and, after failing, attempts to kill Sita. Lakshmana stops her by cutting off her nose and ears. Hearing of this, her brother Kara organizes an attack against the princes. Rama defeats Kara and his Raskshasas. When the news of these events reach Ravana, he resolves to destroy Rama by capturing Sita with the aid of the Rakshasa Maricha. Maricha, assuming the form of a golden deer, captivates Sita's attention. Entranced by the beauty of the deer, Sita pleads with Rama to capture it. Rama, aware that this is the ploy of the demons, cannot dissuade Sita from her desire and chases the deer into the forest, leaving Sita under Lakshmana's guard. After some time, Sita hears Rama calling out to her, afraid for his life, she insists that Lakshmana rush to his aid. Lakshmana tries to assure her that Rama is invincible and that it is best if he continues to follow Rama's orders to protect her. On the verge of hysterics, Sita insists that it is not she but Rama who needs Lakshmana's help. He obeys her wish but stipulates that she is not to leave the cottage or entertain any stranger. He draws a chalk outline, the Lakshmana Reka, around the cottage and casts a spell on it that prevents anyone from entering the boundary but allows people to exit. With the coast finally clear, Ravana appears in the guise of an ascetic requesting Sita's hospitality. Unaware of her guest's plan, Sita is tricked into leaving the Reka and is then forcibly carried away by Ravana. Jatayu, a vulture, tries to rescue Sita, but is mortally wounded. At Lanka, Sita is kept under the guard of Rakshasas. Ravana asks Sita to marry him, but she refuses, being eternally devoted to Rama. 
Meanwhile, Rama and Lakshmana learn about Sita's abduction from Jatayu and immediately set out to save her. During their search, they meet Kabanda and the ascetic Shabari, who direct them towards Sugrava and Hanuman. Kishkinda Kanda Kishkinda Kanda is set in the ape Vinara citadel Kishkinda. Rama and Lakshmana meet Hanuman, the biggest devotee of Rama, greatest of ape heroes and an adherent of Sugrava, the banished pretender to the throne of Kishkinda. Rama befriends Sugrava and helps him by killing his elder brother Vali, thus regaining the kingdom of Kishkinda, in exchange for helping Rama to recover Sita. However, Sugrava soon forgets his promise and spends his time in enjoying his powers. The clever former ape queen Tara, wife of Vali, calmly intervenes to prevent an enraged Lakshmana from destroying the ape citadel. She then eloquently convinces Sugrava to honor his pledge. Sugrava then sends search parties to the four corners of the earth, only to return without success from north, east, and west. The southern search party under the leadership of Angada and Hanuman learns from a vulture named Sampati elder brother of Jatayu, that Sita was taken to Lanka. <inaudible> Sundara Kanda Sundara Kanda forms the heart of Valmiki's Ramayana and consists of a detailed, vivid account of Hanuman's adventures. After learning about Sita, Hanuman assumes a gargantuan form and makes a colossal leap across the sea to Lanka. On the way he meets with many challenges like facing a Gandharvie Kanya who comes in the form of a demon to test his abilities. He encounters a mountain named Minakudu who offers Lord Hanuman assistance and offers him rest. Lord Hanuman refuses because there is little time remaining to complete the search for Sita. After entering into Lanka, he finds a demon, Lankini, who protects all of Lanka. Hanuman fights with her and subjugates her in order to get into Lanka. In the process Lankini, who had an earlier vision, warning from the gods that the end of Lanka nears if someone defeats Lankini. Here, Hanuman explores the demon's kingdom and spies on Ravana. He locates Sita in Ashoka Grove, where she is being wooed and threatened by Ravana and his Rakshasis to marry Ravana. Hanuman reassures Sita, giving Rama's signet ring as a sign of good faith. He offers to carry Sita back to Rama, however, she refuses and says that it is not the Dharma, stating that Ramayana will not have significance if Hanuman carries her to Rama. When Rama is not there Ravana carried Sita forcibly and when Ravana was not there, Hanuman carried Sita back to Rama. She says that Rama himself must come and avenge the insult of her abduction. Hanuman then wreaks havoc in Lanka by destroying trees and buildings and killing Ravana's warriors. He allows himself to be captured and delivered to Ravana. He gives a bold lecture to Ravana to release Sita. He is condemned and his tail is set on fire, but he escapes his bonds and leaping from roof to roof, sets fire to Ravana's citadel and makes the giant leap back from the island. The joyous search party returns to Kishkinda with the news. <inaudible> Yudha Kanda Also known as Lanka Kanda, this book describes the war between the army of Rama and the army of Ravana. Having received Hanuman's report on Sita, Rama and Lakshmana proceed with their allies towards the shore of the Southern Sea. There they are joined by Ravana's renegade brother Vibhishana. The apes named Nala and Nila construct a floating bridge known as Rama Setu across the sea, using stones that floated on water because they had Rama's name written on them. The princes and their army cross over to Lanka. A lengthy war ensues. 
During a battle, Ravana's son Indrajit hurls a powerful weapon at Lakshmana, who is badly wounded and is nearly killed. So Hanuman assumes a gigantic form and flies from Lanka to the Himalayas. Upon reaching Mount Sumeru, Hanuman was unable to identify the herb that could cure Lakshmana and so decided to bring the entire mountain back to Lanka. Eventually, the war ends when Rama kills Ravana. Rama then installs Vibhishana on the throne of Lanka. On meeting Sita, Rama asks her to undergo an Agni Pariksha test of fire to prove her chastity, as he wants to get rid of the rumours surrounding her purity. When Sita plunges into the sacrificial fire, Agni, Lord of Fire raises Sita, unharmed, to the throne, attesting to her innocence. The episode of Agni Pariksha varies in the versions of Ramayana by Valmiki and Tulsidas. In Tulsidasa's Ramacharitamanas, Sita was under the protection of Agni so it was necessary to bring her out before reuniting with Rama. At the expiration of his term of exile, Rama returns to Ayodhya with Sita and Lakshmana, where the coronation is performed. This is the beginning of Ram Raja, which implies an ideal state with good morals. Ramayan is not only the story about how truth defeats the evil, it also teaches us to forget all the evil and arrogance that resides inside ourselves. <laughs> Uttara Kanda Uttara Kanda concerns the final years of Rama, Sita and Rama's brothers. After being crowned king, Rama passes time pleasantly with Sita. After some time, Sita gets pregnant with twin children. However, questions about her purity spread among the populace of Ayodhya and the people reject the Agni Pariksha fire ordeal as proof of her purity. They refuse to accept Sita as their queen because, despite her innocence, they believe she is of soiled reputation. Rama yields to public opinion and reluctantly banishes Sita to the forest, where the sage Valmiki provides shelter in his ashrama hermitage. Here, she gives birth to twin boys, Lava and Kusha, who become pupils of Valmiki and are brought up in ignorance of their identity. Valmiki composes the Ramayana and teaches Lava and Kusha to sing it. Lava and Kusha sing the Ramayana in the presence of Rama and his vast audience. When the twins learn how Rama banished Sita to the forest, they leave the palace, angry at the treatment meted to Sita by Rama. Later, Rama decides to conduct the Ashwamedha Yagna which requires the presence of his wife. Due to Sita's absence, the sages recommend Rama to remarry so that he can conduct the yagna. Rama refuses to do so saying that he wishes to remain loyal to Sita and instead decides to use an idol of Sita for the yagna. He asks the idol to be made of gold, symbolic of what he thinks of her purity. When the Yagna's horse, while traveling all over the world, reaches Valmiki's ashram, Lava and Kusha tie the horse to a tree, preventing it from going further. When Rama comes to know about the horse's capture, he reaches Valmiki's ashram where he sees Sita and learns that Lava and Kusha are his children. Seeing them, Rama becomes grief-stricken and wants them to return to Ayodhya. However, questions about Sita's purity and the legitimacy of Rama's children still persist in people's minds. Realizing this, Rama asks Sita to prove her purity before the people of Ayodhya. Tired of repeated trials by a patriarchal society, Sita calls upon the earth, her mother, to receive her if she has always been loyal to Rama. The ground opens and she vanishes into it, finally laying to rest doubts about her purity and the legitimacy of her children. Rama, grief-stricken at Sita's departure, returns to Ayodhya with his children. Many years later, a messenger from the gods appears and informs Rama that the mission of his incarnation is over. 
Rama hands over the kingdom of Ayodhya to his children and returns to his celestial abode along with his brothers. It was dramatized as Uttararamakarita by the Sanskrit poet Bhavabhuti. Versions As in many oral epics, multiple versions of the Ramayana survive. In particular, the Ramayana related in North India differs in important respects from that preserved in South India and the rest of Southeast Asia. There is an extensive tradition of oral storytelling based on Ramayana in Indonesia, Cambodia, Philippines, Thailand, Malaysia, Laos, Vietnam and Maldives. India. There are diverse regional versions of the Ramayana written by various authors in India. Some of them differ significantly from each other. During the 12th century, Kamban wrote Ramavataram, known popularly as Kambaramayanam in Tamil. A Telugu version, Ranganatha Ramayanam, was written by Gona Buddha Reddy in the 14th century. The earliest translation to a regional Indo-Aryan language is the early 14th century Satakanda Ramayana in Assamese by Madhava Kandali. Valmiki's Ramayana inspired Sri Ramacharat Manas by Tulsidas in 1576, an epic Awadhi a dialect of Hindi version with a slant more grounded in a different realm of Hindu literature, that of Bhakti. It is an acknowledged masterpiece of India, popularly known as Tulsi Krita Ramayana. Gujarati poet Premanand wrote a version of the Ramayana in the 17th century. Other versions include Kritavasi Ramayan, a Bengali version by Kritibas Oja in the 15th century, Vilanka Ramayana by 15th century poet Sarala Dasa and Dandi Ramayana, also known as Jagamohana Ramayana by 16th century poet Balarama Dasa, both in Odia, a Torev Ramayana in Kannada by 16th century poet Narahari, Adhyathmaramayanam, a Malayalam version by Thungath. Through Ramanujan Ezuthachan in the 16th century, in Marathi by Sridhara in the 18th century, in Maithili by Chanda Ja in the 19th century, and in the 20th century, Rashtrakavi Kuvampu's Sri Ramayana Darshanam in Kannada. There is a sub plot to the Ramayana, prevalent in some parts of India, relating the adventures of Ahiravan and Mahi Ravana, evil brother of Ravana, which enhances the role of Hanuman in the story. Hanuman rescues Rama and Lakshmana after they are kidnapped by the Ahi Mahi Ravana at the behest of Ravana and held prisoner in a subterranean cave, to be sacrificed to the goddess Kali. Adbuta Ramayana is a version that is obscure but also attributed to Valmiki, intended as a supplementary to the original Valmiki Ramayana. In this variant of the narrative, Sita is accorded far more prominence, such as elaboration of the events surrounding her birth, in this case to Ravana's wife, Mandodari as well as her conquest of Ravana's older brother in her Mahakali form. Topic. Buddhist version In the Buddhist variant of the Ramayana Dasarathahataka, number 467, Dasharatha was king of Benares and not Ayodhya. Rama called Ramapandita in this version was the son of Kaushalaya, first wife of Dasharatha. Laxmana Lakana was a sibling of Rama and son of Samitra, the second wife of Dasharatha. Sita was the wife of Rama. To protect his children from his wife Kaiki, who wished to promote her son Bharata, Dasharatha sent the three to a hermitage in the Himalayas for a twelve year exile. After nine years, Dasharatha died and Lakana and Sita returned. Ramapandita, in deference to his father's wishes, remained in exile for a further two years. This version does not include the abduction of Sita, there is no Ravan in this version, i.e., no Ram Ravan war. 
In the explanatory commentary on Jataka, Ramapandita is said to have been a previous incarnation of the Buddha, and Sita an incarnation of Yasodhara. But, Ravana appears in other Buddhist literature, the Lankavatara Sutra. <laughs> Jain version Jain versions of the Ramayana can be found in the various Jain agamas like Ravasena's Padmaparana, story of Padmaha and Rama, Padmaha being the name of Sita, Hemakandra's Trisastisalakapurusa Charitra, hagiography of 63 illustrious persons, Sangadasa's Vasudeva Hindi and Uttarapurana by Gunabhadara. According to Jain cosmology, every half-time cycle has nine sets of Balarama, Vasudeva and Prativasudeva. Rama, Lakshmana and Ravana are the eighth Baladeva, Vasudeva and Prativasudeva respectively. Padmanabh Jaini notes that, unlike in the Hindu Puranas, the names Baladeva and Vasudeva are not restricted to Balarama and Krishna in Jain Puranas. Instead they serve as names of two distinct classes of mighty brothers, who appear nine times in each half-time cycle and jointly rule half the earth as half-chakravartans. Jaini traces the origin of this list of brothers to the Janasharitra lives of Jinas by Acharya Bhadrabahu 3D 4th century BCE. In the Jain epic of Ramayana, it is not Rama who kills Ravana as told in the Hindu version. Perhaps this is because Rama, a liberated Jain soul in his last life, is unwilling to kill. Instead, it is Lakshmana who kills Ravana. In the end, Rama, who led an upright life, renounces his kingdom, becomes a Jain monk and attains moksha. On the other hand, Lakshmana and Ravana go to hell. However, it is predicted that ultimately they both will be reborn as upright persons and attain liberation in their future births. According to Jain texts, Ravana will be the future Tirthankara omniscient teacher of Jainism. The Jain versions have some variations from Valmiki's Ramayana. Dasharatha, the king of Sakita had four queens, Aparahita, Samitra, Suprabha and Kaiki. These four queens had four sons. Aparahita's son was Padma and he became known by the name of Rama. Samitra's son was Narayana, he came to be known by another name, Lakshmana. Kaikyai's son was Bharata and Suprabha's son was Shatruna. Furthermore, not much was thought of Rama's fidelity to Sita. According to the Jain version, Rama had four chief queens, Maitali, Prabhavati, Ratiniba, and Sridhama. Furthermore, Sita takes renunciation as a Jain ascetic after Rama abandons her and is reborn in heaven. Rama, after Lakshmana's death, also renounces his kingdom and becomes a Jain monk. Ultimately, he attains Kavala Jnana omniscience and finally liberation. Rama predicts that Ravana and Lakshmana, who were in the fourth hell, will attain liberation in their future births. Accordingly, Ravana is the future Tirthankara of the next half-ascending time cycle and Sita will be his Ganadhara. <laughs> Sikh version in Guru Granth Sahib, there is a description of two types of Ramayana. One is a spiritual Ramayana which is the actual subject of Guru Granth Sahib, in which Ravana is ego, Sita is buddhi intellect, Rama is inner soul and Laxman is man attention, mind. Guru Granth Sahib also believes in the existence of Dashavatara who were kings of their times which tried their best to restore order to the world. King Rama was one of those who is not covered in Guru Granth Sahib. Guru Granth Sahib states, Hikami Upai Dasa Atara Hikami Upai Dasa Atara by Hukam Supreme Command, he created his ten incarnations This version of the Ramayana was written by Guru Gobind Singh, which is part of Dasam Granth. 
He also said that the Almighty, invisible, all-prevailing God created great numbers of Indras, moons and suns, deities, demons and sages, and also numerous saints and brahmanas enlightened people. But they too were caught in the noose of death call transmigration of the soul. This is similar to the explanation in Bhagavad Gita which is part of the Mahabharata. Nepal Besides being the site of discovery of the oldest surviving manuscript of the Ramayana, Nepal gave rise to two regional variants in mid-19th, early 20th century. One, written by Banubhakta Acharya, is considered the first epic of Nepali language, while the other, written by Siddhidas Mahaju in Nepal Basa was a foundational influence in the Nepal Basa Renaissance. Ramayana written by Banubhakta Acharya is one of the most popular verses in Nepal. The popularization of the Ramayana and its tale, originally written in Sanskrit language was greatly enhanced by the work of Banubhakta. Mainly because of his writing of Nepali Ramayana, Banubhakta is also called Adi Kavi or the pioneering poet. <laughs> Southeast Asian Topic. Cambodia The Cambodian version of the Ramayana, Rimkar Khmer, Glory of Rama, is the most famous story of Khmer literature since the Kingdom of Funan era. It adapts the Hindu concepts to Buddhist themes and shows the balance of good and evil in the world. The Rimkar has several differences from the original Ramayana, including scenes not included in the original and emphasis on Hanuman and Sovana Macha, a retelling which influences the Thai and Lao versions. Rimkar in Cambodia is not confined to the realm of literature but extends to all Cambodian art forms, such as sculpture, Khmer classical dance, theatre known as Lak Horn Luang the foundation of the royal ballet, poetry and the mural and bas-reliefs seen at the Silver Pagoda and Angkor Wat. <laughs> Indonesia. There are several Indonesian adaptations of Ramayana, including the Javanese Kakawan Ramayana and Balinese Ramakavaka. The first half of Kakawan Ramayana is similar to the original Sanskrit version, while the latter half is very different. One of the recognizable modifications is the inclusion of the indigenous Javanese guardian demigod, Samar, and his sons, Garing, Petruk, and Bagong who make up the numerically significant four Punakawan or clown servants. Kakawan Ramayana is believed to have been written in central Java circa 870 AD during the reign of Mpu Sindok in the Madong Kingdom. The Javanese Kakawan Ramayana is not based on Valmiki's epic, which was then the most famous version of Rama's story, but based on Ravanavada or the Ravana Massacre, which is the 6th or 7th century poem by Indian poet Bhattakavya. Kakawan Ramayana was further developed on the neighboring island of Bali, becoming the Balinese Ramakavaka. The bas-reliefs of Ramayana and Krishnayana scenes are carved on balustrades of the 9th-century Prambanan temple in Yogyakarta, as well as in the 14th-century Penataran temple in East Java. In Indonesia, the Ramayana is a deeply ingrained aspect of the culture, especially among Javanese, Balinese and Sundanese people, and has become the source of moral and spiritual guidance as well as aesthetic expression and entertainment, for example in Wayang and traditional dances. The Balinese Kachak dance for example, retells the story of the Ramayana, with dancers playing the roles of Rama, Sita, Lakshmana, Jatayu, Hanuman, Ravana, Kumbhakarna and Indrajit surrounded by a troop of over 50 bare-chested men who serve as the chorus chanting, C.A.K. 
The performance also includes a fire show to describe the burning of Lanka by Hanuman. In Yogyakarta, the Wayang Wang Javanese dance also retells the Ramayana. One example of a dance production of the Ramayana in Java is the Ramayana ballet performed on the Trimurti Prambanan open air stage, with the three main prasad spires of the Prambanan Hindu temple as a backdrop. Topic. Laos Phra Lok Phra Lam is a Lao language version, whose title comes from Lakshmana and Rama. The story of Lakshmana and Rama is told as the previous life of Gautama Buddha. Topic. Malaysia the Hikayat Seri Rama of Malaysia incorporated element of both Hindu and Islamic mythology. Topic: Myanmar. Yama Zatda is the Burmese version of Ramayana. It is also considered the unofficial national epic of Myanmar. There are nine known pieces of the Yama Zatda in Myanmar. The Burmese name for the story itself is Yamayana, while Zatda refers to the acted play or being part of the Jataka tales of Theravada Buddhism. This Burmese version is also heavily influenced by Ramakian Thai version of Ramayana which resulted from various invasions by Kanbang dynasty kings toward the Ayutthaya kingdom. Philippines. The Maharadia Lawana, an epic poem of the Maranao people of the Philippines, has been regarded as an indigenized version of the Ramayana since it was documented and translated into English by Professor Juan R. Francisco and Nagasora Madale in 1968. The poem, which had not been written down before Francisco and Madale's translation, narrates the adventures of the Monkey King, Maharadia Lawana, whom the gods have gifted with immortality. Francisco, an Indologist from the University of the Philippines Manila, believed that the Ramayana narrative arrived in the Philippines some time between the 17th to 19th centuries, via interactions with Javanese and Malaysian cultures which traded extensively with India, by the time it was documented in the 1960s, the character names, place names, and the precise episodes and events in Maharadia Lawana's narrative already had some notable differences from those of the Ramayana. Francisco believed that this was a sign of indigenization and suggested that some changes had already been introduced in Malaysia and Java even before the story was heard by the Maranao, and that upon reaching the Maranao homeland, the story was further indigenized to suit Philippine cultural perspectives and orientations. <laughs> Thailand Thailand's popular national epic Ramakian Thai, Ramkayarta from Sanskrit Ramakirti, Glory of Rama is derived from the Hindu epic. In Ramakian, Sita is the daughter of Ravana and Mandodari Thotsakan and Mantho. Vibhishana Pifek, the astrologer brother of Ravana, predicts the death of Ravana from the horoscope of Sita. Ravana has thrown her into the water, but she is later rescued by Janaka Chanak. While the main story is identical to that of Ramayana, many other aspects were transposed into a Thai context, such as the clothes, weapons, topography and elements of nature, which are described as being Thai in style. It has an expanded role for Hanuman and he is portrayed as a lascivious character. Ramakian can be seen in an elaborate illustration at Wat Phraq in Bangkok. Critical edition 
A critical edition of the text was compiled in India in the 1960s and 1970s, by the Oriental Institute at Maharaja Sayajirao University of Baroda, India, utilising dozens of manuscripts collected from across India and the surrounding region. An English language translation of the critical edition was completed in November 2016 by Sanskrit scholar Robert P. Goldman of the University of California, Berkeley. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Influence on culture and art. One of the most important literary works of ancient India, the Ramayana has had a profound impact on art and culture in the Indian subcontinent and Southeast Asia with the lone exception of Vietnam. The story ushered in the tradition of the next thousand years of massive scale works in the rich diction of regal courts and Hindu temples. It has also inspired much secondary literature in various languages, notably Kambaramayanam by Tamil poet Kambar of the 12th century, Telugu language Mola Ramayanam by poet Mola and Ranganatha Ramayanam by poet Gona Buddha Reddy, 14th century Kannada poet Narahari's Torev Ramayana, and 15th century Bengali poet Kritibas Ojhs Kritavasi Ramayan, as well as the 16th century Awad. Version, Ramacharitamanas, written by Tulsidas. Ramayanic scenes have also been depicted through terracottas, stone sculptures, bronzes, and paintings. These include the stone panel at Nagarjunakanda in Andhra Pradesh depicting Bharata's meeting with Rama at Chitrakuta 3rd century CE. .The Ramayana became popular in Southeast Asia during 8th century and was represented in literature, temple architecture, dance and theatre. Today, dramatic enactments of the story of the Ramayana, known as Ramalila, take place all across India and in many places across the globe within the Indian diaspora. In Indonesia, especially Java and Bali, Ramayana has become a popular source of artistic expression for dance drama and shadow puppet performance in the region. Sendratari Ramayana is Javanese traditional ballet of Wayang Arang genre, routinely performed in Prambanan Trimurti Temple and in cultural center of Yogyakarta. Balinese dance drama of Ramayana is also performed routinely in Balinese Hindu temples, especially in temples such as Ubud and Uluwatu, where scenes from Ramayana is integrap part of Kachak dance performance. Javanese Wayang Kulit Purwa also draws its episodes from Ramayana or Mahabharata. Ramayana has also been depicted in many paintings, most notably by the Malaysian artist Syed Thajuddin in 1972. The epic tale was picturized on canvas in epic proportions measuring 152 by 823 cm in nine panels. The painting depicts three prolific parts of the epic, namely the abduction of Sita, Hanuman visits Sita and Hanuman burns Lanka. The painting is currently in the permanent collection of the Malaysian National Visual Arts Gallery. <laughs> Religious significance Rama, the hero of the Ramayana, is one of the most popular deities worshipped in the Hindu religion. Each year, many devout pilgrims trace their journey through India and Nepal, halting at each of the holy sites along the way. The poem is not seen as just a literary monument, but serves as an integral part of Hinduism and is held in such reverence that the mere reading or hearing of it or certain passages of it, is believed by Hindus to free them from sin and bless the reader or listener. According to Hindu tradition, Rama is an incarnation avatar of God Vishnu. The main purpose of this incarnation is to demonstrate the righteous path dharma for all living creatures on earth. In popular culture 
Multiple modern, English language adaptations of the epic exist, namely Ram Chandra's series by Amish Tripathi, Ramayana series by Ashok Banker, and a mythopoetic novel, Asura, Tale of the Vanquished by Anand Nilakantan. Another Indian author, Devdit Patanayak, has published three different retellings and commentaries of Ramayana titled Sita, the Book of Ram and Hanuman's Ramayan. A number of plays, movies and television serials have also been produced based upon the Ramayana. In Indonesia, Ramayana department store is named after the epic. The company which owns it is known as PT Ramayana Lestari Sentosa founded in 1978 with its main office located in Jakarta. Stage Starting in 1978 and under the supervision of Baba Hari Das, Ramayana has been performed every year by Mount Madonna School in Watsonville, California. Currently, it is the largest yearly, Western version of the epic being performed. It takes the form of a colorful musical with custom costumes, sung and spoken dialogue, jazz rock orchestration and dance. This performance takes place in a large audience theater setting usually in June, in San Jose, California. DOS has taught acting arts, costume attire design, mask making and choreography to bring alive characters of Sri Ram, Sita, Hanuman, Lakshmana, Shiva, Parvati, Vibhishan, Jatayu, Sugrava, Serpanika, Ravana and his Rikshasa court, Mignada, Kumbhakarna and the army of monkeys and demons. Movies. <laughs> <laughs> Sampurna Ramayanam, a Telugu, Tamil bilingual film starring N. T. Rama Rao Sampurna Ramayana, a Hindi film directed by Babubai Mistri Lava Kusha, a Uttara Kanda-based bilingual Telugu movie and Tamil movie starring N. T. Rama Rao Sampurna Ramayanamu, a Telugu film directed by Bapu, starring Saban Babu, Chandrakala, S. V. Ranga Rao Kanchana Sita, a Malayalam film by G. Aravindan Ramayana, The Legend of Prince Rama, a Indo-Japanese traditional animation feature film a Little Princess an American film chronicling the time of an orphaned child during World War I in an all-girls boarding school. The story of Rama and Sita is told by the main character to the other girls and is constantly referenced throughout the plot. Opera Jawa, an Indonesian-Austrian film in the Indonesian language, inspired by the story of the abduction of Sita 2008. Sita Sings the Blues, an independent animated film 2008. Lava Kusa, The Warrior Twins, animated film based on Uttara Kanda 2010. Ramayana, The Epic, a Warner Brothers. Indian animated film 2010. Sri Rama Rajam, based on Uttara Kanda, a Telugu film starring Nandamuri Balakrishna 2011. Yak, The Giant King, a reinterpretation of Ramayana, the Thai animation film tells the story of a giant robot, Na Q, who is left wandering in a barren wasteland after a great war. Na Q meets Zhao Phuc, a puny tin robot who has lost his memory and is now stuck with his new big friend. Together they set out across the desert populated by metal scavengers, to look for Ram, the creator of all robots, 2012. Mumbai Musical, DreamWorks Animation, 2016 Topic. Plays Kanchana Sita, Sakatham and Lankalakshmi, award-winning trilogy by Malayalam playwright C. N. Srikanthan Nair. 
Lankaswaran, a play by the award-winning Tamil cinema actor R.S. Manohar Kachak, a Balinese traditional folk dance which plays and tells the story of Ramayana. Exhibitions <inaudible> 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 Gallery Nucleus, Ramayana Exhibition Part of the Art of the Book Ramayana, Divine Loophole by Sanjay Patel. The Rama Epic, Hero. Heroine, Ally, Foe by the Asian Art Museum. <laughs> Books The Song of Rama by Vanamali. Ramayana by William Buck and S. Trieste. Ramayana, Divine Loophole, by Sanjay Patel. Sita, an illustrate retelling of the Ramayana, by Devdit Patanayak. Hanuman's Ramavan, by Devdit Patanayak. TV series Ramayan, originally broadcast on Doordarshan, produced by Ramanand Sagar in 1987. J. Hanuman, originally broadcast on Doordarshan, produced and directed by Sanjay Khan. Ramayan, 2002, originally broadcast on ZTV, produced by BR Films. Ramayan, 2008, originally broadcast on Imagine TV, produced by Ramanand Sagar. Ramayan 2012, a remake of the 1987 series and aired on ZTV. Antarich 2004, a sci-fi version of Ramayan, originally broadcast on Star Plus. Ravan series on Life of Ravana based on Ramayana, originally broadcast on ZTV. Sankatmachan Mahabali Hanuman 2015 series based on the life of Hanuman presently broadcasting on Sony TV. Shah K. Ram, a series on Star Plus, originally broadcast from November 16, 2015 to November 4, 2016. Citations <coughs> <coughs>